morning. Um, today we're going to discuss uh, continuity. Um, I had some questions about removable and non-removable discontinuities and um, thought about making a little write-up about it, but um, generally that's kind of the problem with math is, is uh, the, the wording is so strange. So I think it, it's probably most understandable uh, graphically. So uh, and, and particularly removable and non-removable discontinuities. So it's kind of a continuity slash discontinuity uh, one anyway uh, discussion. Um, and the first one, first of all, we say that a function is continuous if the limit as um, x <clears throat> approaches, and I'm going to use d, of f of x equals f evaluated at d. Now, this d is just a generic uh, value of x, and I didn't use a, b, or c because I've already used them in these um, um, in these drawings. Uh, this this definition implies uh, three things. It implies itself for one thing, but it implies one uh, that f of x is defined at x equals d. It implies that uh, the limit as x approaches d of f of x exists, meaning that the double-sided limit exists, that it's not a limit from the left and a limit from the right aren't, aren't different. And then three, finally, it actually implies itself that if these two things are met, the third thing that needs to be met for a function to be continuous is the limit as x approaches d of f of x equals f of d. And what that says is that the double-sided limit exists, the functions defined at x equals d, and the value of the double-sided limit as x approaches d of f of x is the function evaluated at that value of x. So with that in mind, um, we can uh, think about these pictures. and. Um, in the first picture, I've labeled with a point A and called it F. We can we can see that uh, the function is in fact has a discontinuity at A because the first condition is not met. Um, uh, one F of x is not defined at x equals A in this case, uh, so we call it, this is a discontinuity. Now we can classify this discontinuity as removable. And the reason is, is if we we can classify, and I think this is easiest to, to demonstrate uh, graphically, that's why I drew the pictures. Um, we call it removable if by simply uh, making one adjustment to the function, namely that hole there, filling in that hole, then we have a continuous function. Now, now it's a, that's a removable discontinuity. We could remove it. On the contrary, in graph G at the point B here, okay, it's a discontinuity. Uh, f of x is defined at x equals B, so that it passes that, but the double-sided limit of uh, G in this case does not exist. As we come in uh, from the, the left of B, we have this, the limit is this point, whatever G value that is, and as we come in from the right, we have this this point up here so it's different. We actually call this a finite jump. Now notice this is called the non-removable discontinuity and the reason is is if I there's no there's no point in here that I can come in and fill in and say that this function is continuous. I mean if I fill in this dot right here well now I don't even have a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test and really anywhere in here. So that's why it's a non-removable discontinuity and Generally, we say it's a removable discontinuity if the if the double-sided limit exists. That is, if the limit uh, equals the limit from the right equals the limit from the left, uh, such as in the first case. In the second case, the double-sided limit does not exist. Not only is it discontinuous, but we can say that's a non-removable discontinuity. So I'll just label that non-removable, and then we'll call this a removable. 
In the third case, in H, um, I particularly drew this because this was where the question came up. Uh, F is not defined at X to D, so it is definitely C is a discontinuity um, in, this, in this case right here. Uh, in fact, we have a vertical asymptote as, as we approach uh, C from both sides, we actually are going to positive infinity. Now, um, this is this is kind of strange because I've seen that a removable discontinuity uh, it, it's kind of hard to find a good definition of it and sometimes it it simply says that if the limit from the left equals the limit from the right uh, meaning the double sided limit exists then um, then you have a removable discontinuity well you know we get into a gray area now because in this case now technically, in my opinion, the limit does not exist from the left and the right because it's going to positive infinity. And positive infinity is, is not a number. So therefore, to me, that's not a limit. That's my personal opinion. That's, that's a description of the direction in which the y values are tending towards as we approach c from both sides. But I can see where the confusion would be uh, because it does appear the way we're taught by convention that we could say that the limit as x in this case uh, approaches c of h of x equals positive infinity that there is kind of a double-sided limit going on there although I, I I have an issue with that and that's because somebody might think that that's a removable discontinuity based on that, some definitions that I've seen um, but it's not it's non-removable and the way I like to say it is if the double-sided limit exists and it's a number, it has to be a number. But graphically, the way you can think of that, if you don't like that, is that remember how I can just fill in this one point and make it continuous and I could just fill in this, I couldn't fill it in right here. Well, the same difference here. If I come in here and fill in a value for C, well, yeah, now F of C is defined or H of C in this case is defined. But as we approach C from both sides, it doesn't approach that number. It approaches, it still approaches positive and negative infinity. So the, the, the discontinuity, we can't just change it and make the function continuous. It's still non-removable. So that's non-removable. Um, this might not have made any more sense than it did before, but uh, <laughs> I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, the best way I can I, I like to think about it is that if the if the limit from the left equals a limit from the right and the function is not defined at a certain x value but that double sided limit exists and it's a number such as in the first case then the discontinuity is removable if if it's anything else if the double sided limit uh, doesn't exist meaning that the limit from the right differs from the different from the limit from the left or uh, the uh, limits are infinite limits, then the discontinuity is non-removable. Um, and I think that's about it.